Hey guys, Adam Trigger here, wagertalk.com. It's Friday. We're going to be talking Major League Baseball. I haven't done one of these videos in a while because I've been on first pitch basically all week. Um, so happy to be back doing a video for you guys today. Uh, but if you don't see me here, you can usually find me on that show. You can find all of my stuff at Wager Talk. And if you like and subscribe to the channel, you'll get alerts and you, you can find videos on a daily basis from myself and all the other great handicappers at wagertalk.com. You can head over to my link that you see on the screen right there, wt.buzz slash at, from now until Sunday to take advantage of a great special that we have. We are running it through Sunday. Buy two months, get August free. You're going to want to do that because August is preseason football. I got preseason football started with a winner last night on the Giants. I have another 4% preseason best bet that goes on Saturday. And I'm now on an 8-2 and two preseason run dating back until before last year. Six and two last season in preseason, um, and, and one and zero to start this year. Won my last one of 2022, so I've got a nice little eight and two NFL preseason run going. Uh, and you're going to want to get on that special. Uh, but we also have some major league baseball to talk about too. It's been a great season so far, um, and this might end up being a play for me. But I'm looking at game two, so I'm not going to break down game one because I don't have a play there. But I do want to start by addressing game one, because I don't know about you guys, I can't bet game two of a doubleheader until I see what happens in game one. I almost always have a plan of what I'm looking for, and that usually de de determines if I can make the play that I want to make in game two. So just some general stuff about these two teams and this series. The Guardians come into this series having lost five straight games. It's their longest losing streak of the season, and all five losses were at home. So yesterday's day off was a, a much needed day off, specifically for the bullpen um, that has not been good and that has really logged a ton of innings lately. They're now going to travel to Minnesota for what is a monster series for them. Uh, four games in three days. This doubleheader will kick off a four-game set that's going to be played Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And if the Twins were to sweep this series, they would take the division lead. Cleveland's losing streak has closed the gap to just three and a half games in the NL, or sorry, the AL Central, and that team chasing him is the one hosting this series in the, Minnesota, in the Minnesota Twins. So, like I said, I don't have a play in game one, but I would love nothing more than to see a close Guardians win where they have to use some of their bullpen arms. The reason being is I'm going to really like the Twins in game two, and I can just about guarantee that I will be on the Twins in game two uh, unless the Twins win a close game. It's probably the only way I'm not making a best bet in game two uh, because that would, would mean the Twins likely use some of their better bullpen arms and, and maybe exhale a little bit. Um, and, and then, of course, if the Guardians lose game one, that losing streak is now up to six. So I'd have to, uh, I'd have to reassess before game two, uh, which there will be time to do because this is not a true doubleheader. This is a day-night. We're going 2 p.m. Eastern. The next game's not till 8 p.m. Eastern. So there is, there is quite a gap between the two games and plenty of time uh, you know, to make a decision uh, on betting it or not. Um, my general sort of overview here is I don't really trust the Guardians' bullpen right now over, the, uh, over two games. Uh, you know, I mentioned it at the top. You know, this has been one of the best bullpens in the league in, in Major League Baseball this season, but lately that hasn't been the case at all. A 5.46 ERA in August, and um, the, it it's, has everything to do with the fact that their starting pitching isn't any good, and it's forcing the bullpen to log a ton of innings, and that's probably going to be the case for the Guardians in Game 1. Regardless of the outcome, uh, it's Cantillo in Game 1, and I don't see him going you know, particularly deep, so win or lose, you're probably still going to see bullpen innings from the Guardians in Game 1, and the Guardians... They, if Cantillo doesn't go past the fifth inning, which I don't think he's going to in game one, that would make it six or seven straight. I think it would be seven straight starts where the Guardian starter has not pitched more than five innings. And, and that's a real issue. And it's probably why you're seeing a bullpen that's been one of the best bullpens in the league suddenly start to struggle. It's just a volume issue. A lot of, high, you know, a lot of their high leverage guys having to come in in the fifth sixth seventh eighth innings of games and now they're just you know they're just logging innings and it's catching up with them because we're in august and that's just what happens in, in major you know over the course of a 162 major league baseball season now 
Really interesting stuff, and now we're going to go into game two. But I want to point out that the Guardians this year are 5-0 and against the Twins. So while the Guardians have motivation to end this losing streak, their season-long losing streak, the Guardians have embarrassed their division rivals, the Twins, just you know this far. And the Twins, pro- you know, they have just as much, if not you know, more motivation to come into this series and play well against the team that they're chasing in the division. And if the Twins could sweep this doubleheader, they're only going to be a couple of games out of first place. So, you know, ton of motivation here on good on both sides, which is why I'd still be willing to come back with the Twins in game two. Like if the Twins win in a blowout in game one, that's just, I mean, how demoralizing is that for a Guardians team that's already, you know, doesn't have a ton of confidence. Uh, so like I said, good chance that regardless of who wins here in game one, I'll be on the Twins in game two. But you know, the, the one thing that would scare me off would be at the Twins winning a close game where they use all of their good bullpen pieces. As far as good pieces being back, that's what's going to happen for the Twins today. Byron Buxton back from a back injury. He's back in the lineup. Royce Lewis has finished his mini rehab stint in St. Paul. He's back today. Uh, and Jose Miranda, who's kind of been in and out of the lineup with some injuries as well. He's back. Kyle Farmer just got called back up, you know, right before we're doing this video. Um, so he, you know, the twins have options and they're getting healthy. So even though you don't have Carlos Correa back yet, um, still looking at a much healthier twins team than they've been dealing with the last week or so. Now we head to game two and and we're going to get the debut of Alex Cobb. Not only is it his guardians debut, but it's his 2024 debut. Uh, he was traded at the trade deadline from San Francisco and he'll make his first start of the 2024 major league season with his new team uh, tonight. Now, his rehab's been very good. His rehab was split between San Francisco, um, so, so you know minor leagues for, for San Francisco, and then he made a start for Columbus against Syracuse last week. Um, no, no reason to fade him from what, what I've seen in, in rehab so far. His stuff's been good. You know, that's all fine and good, but I, I, there, it would take a mountain-moving effort, in my opinion, for him to throw more than than five innings here, or, or even like more than six innings, um, and, and that's where I think the Twins' big edge is going to come in Game Two. Because even if Alex Cobb is good, like he's been in his rehab stints, uh, I, I just can't see him getting past like the fifth or sixth inning here. He hasn't gone past five innings in any rehab start, and now he's facing not only a, a major league lineup but a very good one. Um, you, pretty much regardless of who the Twins, you know, set up to face him in Game Two, so. It would be really difficult for him to go past five. I don't think Cantillo's going past five in game one, which means that would that would make it seven straight games that the, the Guardians don't get a start longer than five innings from a starting pitcher. And once again, put the stress on a bullpen that's already been very, very stressed over the past couple of weeks. Now, on the other side, um, you've got Lewis Varland, who is a guy that I you know was super high on coming into the season. He had a horrific April, got sent down to AAA, and he's basically been there, you know, for the for the rest of the year, like up until this point. He got recalled very briefly in June, made two starts, two appearances, and sent back down to AAA. He just never really got off the mat in 2024. You know, first couple of starts for him were against very good lineups. He, I believe he faced the Dodgers when they were like fully loaded and, you know, a couple really good lineups he faced, had a bad April. Confidence was shot. He got sent back down to AAA. But he has been outstanding for St. Paul, now going on like about a month and a half. Um, you know, his his ERA, his last six starts at AAA, 1.48. Uh, in July, his whip was 1.19, and he had an opponent, uh, opponent batting average against at the AAA level of 174. So all really, really good numbers. And, you know, this is kind of like his spot to lose now. Uh, with with Joe Ryan, you know, on the IL for the foreseeable future, so a huge opportunity for Varland. I, I mean, and I really think that he continues to pitch well, um, like he has for the past month and a half. It's just this time he's going to do it for the big league club for the Twins tonight. Last thing I'll say about Alex Cobb that I meant to mention earlier is, you know, he wasn't just rehabbing one injury. He had hip surgery this past off season. His rehab was set back by a shoulder injury. And then he had a blister last week. So you tell me how this guy's pitching past the, the fifth inning today. Even if he's, even if he throws five shutout innings, it's unlikely that he's going to go more than five. 
I think you're going to have, you know, four innings from the Guardians bullpen, who has really struggled to get the high leverage out. Two of the losses on this five current five game losing streak, they've blown leads. And, uh, you know, this is just the regression that I think the Guardians have been due almost all season. Um, their underlying metrics have suggested some regression from their insanely hot start. And I think it's happening a little bit right now. So I really love this matchup with Lewis Varland and the Twins at home in game two. If they win big in game one, they're probably going to ride that momentum into game two. And if they lose game one, then that's all the more reason to keep guys like Lewis, Buxton, Miranda out there for game two because they really cannot afford to get swept at home in this doubleheader in the context of the AL Central right now with the Royals, you know, right on their tails as well. So a huge doubleheader in in Minnesota today for these two teams. I'm looking at the Twins, minus 115 right now in game two. Uh, but I'm going to wait, and I'm going to watch some of game one. I'll probably make my decision uh, around 4 or 5 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you are following me on Twitter, at Top SI. I will post uh, the play there if I do lock it in. Um, so again, follow me on Twitter and please continue to like and subscribe to our channel here. Uh, and, and you can find all my stuff over at wagertalk.com, wt.buzz slash at. Hope everyone has a great weekend. NFL preseason plays are up on my page and go twins.